Alright, for those who are tuned in here guys, welcome again to our second now indie highlight. Uh, last week we got a chance to do Five Nights at Freddy's and Lethal League. Um, I want to apologize for anyone that was catching that. We did have some weird audio issues uh, that I wasn't really able to notice right away. For some reason the game kind of synced out my audio improperly. So uh, I've done some kind of audio checks and hopefully I've got it fixed and ready to go this time. We'll see I guess, right? Um, but that hopefully shouldn't be an issue this time. But so. A uh, game we're going through here is now a game called Never Alone. This is actually a game I have been looking forward to for a long time when it came out. Um, I have had a chance to actually play through it a little bit already, but I wanted to give you guys a chance to see it and kind of see the, the beauty and design that has gone into it. It really is a magnificently designed game, and the story behind it is just as awesome. Uh, we did do an article and a review on it. You can find it over on urbanandgamingelite.com. Uh, beyond that, uh, we're going to have this hopefully posted tomorrow, so if you're watching this on YouTube as well, we'll have the link down in the description. But I want to give a chance to kind of showcase this as part of our Indie Highlights series. Uh, a little bit of intro kind of into the game. Uh, it's kind of an interesting piece is the story behind how they put this together. So two companies got together essentially to put this idea together in terms of bringing cultural information and kind of unseen or unheard of cultures to the public eye a bit more and start to tell their stories. So the story behind this one is based in uh, Alaska and has to do with the uh, different legends and stories that have done around there. I got a chance to talk to one of the developers and one of the other guys involved with it up at Indiecade. I was really impressed with the game up there with it and just kind of impressed with the idea, especially that this is part of a much larger project. They're actually hoping to do a lot more of this down the line, bringing in similar games, similar types of games, and much more to the realm of it. So I look forward to hopefully seeing that as well. So with that, we're going to take a quick jump into it. So I'll start over new forward here to make it a little, little more fair so you guys get the start of it. So there's a lot of these kind of intro pieces that come into it as well as these insights that will pop in. Uh, they're kind of cool. Once we get one or two of them, I'll, I'll showcase a couple of them to see what they are. Uh, the insights are mostly based as kind of videos or uh, basically <laughs> live interviews. <laughs> This kind of gives you a little bit of an intro into the game and where things are. Uh, nice piece about it, as you can hear, it's actually the natural language uh, of the people over there with the subject あの、これがやっぱりね。あの、これがやっぱりね。記者今、バネがやっしょ。あの、これがやっぱりしょね。記者今、バネがやっしょ。あの、これがやっしょ。あの、これがやっしょ。あの、これがやっしょ。あの、
I just kind of, um, this is actually a co-op slash single player game, so obviously we're doing it single player, however there's a co-op version where one other person can play actually as the fox and one person plays as the main character, the girl. Uh, and one of the interesting kind of things, and I guess kind of annoying parts of it, is that the switch back and forth is a little bit glitchy at times the single player, I wish I had a person here to do it with, but I don't, so I'll be showcasing you the piece of it, so yeah, you can switch back and forth. As you can see, they have kind of different abilities attached to them as well. Haha, uh -huh. there fell through the air. <laughs> So you can see kind of the yeah, so you have to drop back and forth of it, so you need to complete the different puzzles. direction for the game is just is just fantastic. It's very well designed, very well put together. Um, even the music in the background just really kind of adds to that feeling. That's what feels right. I especially love the snow effects. I'll screw that up. Super <laughs> Sarah <laughs> So much of the beginning game is kind of simple, it's a little bit of kind of an introductory piece and gets you kind of used to it. Oops! Oh, I did the last time too. Haha, <laughs> I saved myself. Nice 
too, because a lot of the puzzles are you're not, you know, there's a lot of light figuring out you actually have to do. Like the game doesn't just kind of hand it to you. Kan <laughs> Just creepy. <laughs> oh, hey, I missed that inside before. <laughs> So yeah, as you can see, it's, going, it's, it's very much a puzzle game um, in every possible way with it, but just the... There's just some, there's some fun aspects of the design, but honestly, it, it, it's definitely one of those games you got to play yourself really kind of to, to grasp something too, but you just see the kind of the game goes on. The direction is just neat, and it's a, it's a neat culture kind of piece. Uh. <laughs> I
Ibeaxiaga So you end up getting it as a pulsa. Oops. Just kind of a little magical throwing rack thing. Yeah, he gets a little noise with that following. Whoops. Ha ha. death too many times. <laughs> Patience is definitely a virtue in this one. See all the spirit things basically follow the wolf, and that's kind of a there's a, there's a point to that too that you'll see as your game kind of proceeds. Face. 
Injokulum tal to come in. Good Kakova. Sasha Romera Lugunanok and the Kubit Vinetitaravicho Kakame Nanok Nikajalaicho Agalan Tamananuna Allah.
just so I think the same. Oh, no. So awesome. There's something up here or not? I think there is. Oops, nice script jump. No, no, I wanna I wanna jump off when I go up. There we go. Oh yeah. I mentioned some of the cultural insights. I wanted to show uh, one of these here, actually, because you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, so as you go through, these are kind of the unlockables that you can see throughout the game, and this is one of them that comes up. I want to show the first one, it's actually pretty cool. One of the things I think a lot of people need to understand is we aren't a museum piece. The Inupiaq people are a living people and a living culture. Even though we're in northern Alaska, which covers this vast area from Nome all the way over the Canadian border, is that there is this extreme value of interconnectedness and interdependence. It's a hunting society, a gathering society, from thousands of years. This is what creates our culture. That special relationship between humans and the natural world and the animals, and that it teaches you how to have a, a society 
that doesn't do too much harm to the world. Love and respect for nature, for one another, for our elders, very, very fundamental value, key to, key to life. Our values are something that bind us all. The importance of sharing with one another, the importance of spirituality, and the connection to the land, our traditions, how we hunt, sharing of stories and songs and dances. I'm Inipak. I'm from the Arctic Ocean. Inipak. I am Inipak. It's very important to me. It's, it's who I am as a person. And we're very proud of who we are and we want to continue that. So there are tons of those built in here, as you can see, there's 24 total. Um, I've gotten just about all of them, but, you know, it, it's, the game itself has kind of a simplistic premise, and, you know, it's a, it's a general simple puzzle game, kind of adventure game. It's not going to be your, you know, competitive esports game, but it's not trying to be either, which I think is, is a big part of that point. You know, it's not trying to be something super special or, or, in that realm. It just wants to be something unique and it wants to kind of introduce and showcase this culture, which I think is awesome. They do a very great job of bringing this culture kind of into it. Um, I want to show one more of this here too and we'll get back to the gameplay with it. We're very much aware of the climate change and it's been for many years, even before climatologists were noticing this change, in it we're already saying, Sila Alangoktok, our climate is changing. If the heat is going the way it is right now, for us it's going to be pretty bad. Different birds are coming, and they're coming earlier, and sometimes rain is more than what we want, because when there's more rain, we know it's going to melt the permafrost. In my time as a young whaler, when I was nine years old, we're hunting from ice that was about 25 feet thick. And there was giant icebergs already floating, coming by. That was the first signs of a changing climate. Ice that never broke before was now moving. Now, here it is 50 years later, we're hunting whale from ice that's 18 inches thick. There's no more thick ice. It's creating a malfunction in our whaling season is, is what it is. Actually more than that, all seasons in general. I think we are more scientists than more people will realize. <laughs> we have more knowledge of those things than people will ever know. That's a good point. They actually see a lot of that, that effect with it. But So yeah, so those are the cultures that you can find throughout. There are quite a few in there. Um, they're all very cool like this. There's one earlier that was a story of uh, basically kind of the story behind that stranded ice piece. Um, that was kind of a neat one too. So, And this part, honestly, I, the, the design of this is just absolutely fantastic for, for an indie game. So for anybody watching that is interested in picking up the game, I'll mention this towards the end again too. But um, you can find the game on Steam. I believe it's still on sale for $13.50. Um, it's a great game with it, and it's a lot of fun too to play with somebody else. The only problem is, if you're going to get it on PC, you need to have an Xbox 360 controller or compatible controller. I use the 360 because it's the one I know for sure is. Um, there are some that you can kind of make work, but you need to have that with it. Um, otherwise, you can find the game on PlayStation 4 or Xbox One as well for the exact same price too. So. <laughs> There we go. 
No! That's gonna hurt. <laughs> Oops, oh come on. Ooh. Oops, I don't know why the camera's not following me right now. That's not cool. Mike, yeah, okay, I had problems with the last time. I'll just move it closer for now. Um, let me know if that's any better, unless I can turn it up in the actual stream. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Alright, I cannot remember how I get her up there again. Oh, man. I gotta think here. There should be a way for me to do that, but I can't remember what. Gotcha, okay, um, here, here's what I can do. Um, I, I have my mic input low. I'll just match it to the game audio. Let me know if that's any better. I amped up the mic a little bit. Oops, come on, there we go. There's one I'm missing somewhere, I'm just not sure where. How to do this one? Like I said, the game gives you very little direction on how to solve these, which I like. It's actually it makes you kind of be creative and fun. I've done this before, so I should know more of these. <laughs> hmm. Oops. Ow. Oh. Aha! There we go. Remember things. Ah, I think I have to do it in a little jump. There we go. There we go. Oops, I turn it up. There we go. 
that. Oh, I don't remember this part. This part is interesting, that's all I really remember. Yeah, okay, okay, I need to do that. Alright. This is another one of those, this is one of those spots that was a lot nicer if you had a second person, but it is doable without, it's just you kind of rely a little bit on the AI to properly cooperate. Which can be a... Uh, an interesting element. Yeah, there's some issues with it, like it not staying, like the, your your person not staying at the right spot. Uh oh. Yeah, I think I'm going the wrong way with it. My bad. Try to backtrack to the top. Or maybe the wolf is just stuck. I don't know. I don't remember actually where to go from all this. Aha, uh -huh, maybe towards the light. There we go. This looks right. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. Gotta go a little side path here. Wee! Super flying dog! Or wolf. Not bad. Nibachia <laughs> This actually, I believe this. Yeah, this is about the part that I gotta see a lot during Indicate. This is actually, this area looks kind of familiar with the design and everything. Damn, I'm not kidding. 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 I'm not kidding.
ที่ก็ค่อยจะเข้ามากเจ็ดกาดหนุนักRight the first time.
There we go. Oops. Oh. Oh no, I wanted to turn it. either. on those properties of momentum right there. I don't know. There we go. I was trying. I can't remember if I can actually hit the tail or not. Oops, oh. I don't know what that means. Thanks for those that tuned into the stream. My apologies for the issues we had connecting with it, um, but hopefully you get a chance to check out this video here. 
So uh, this is our indie highlight. Again, we try to do this every Monday at 7 p.m. Central Time, intending to show different indie games, titles that are out there, uh, also looking at doing alpha, beta builds, etc., uh, different kind of pieces with it. Not 100% sure what we're planning on doing next week right now. With uh, Thanksgiving coming up this week, we might actually take a little bit of a break next week and do something kind of simple, either like a redo. Um, I'm actually thinking about going back to some older ones as well, showcasing, uh, potentially looking at doing Braid, a little bit of showcase of Braid, or maybe even the uh, one of the two from Supergiant with Bastion or Transistor. If you guys like this, like the video in the stream, please comment down in the video below. Let us know what you think, like, subscribe, and follow all those great pieces with it. That definitely goes a long way to letting us know that you enjoy the content. If you have suggestions or feedback on what you'd like to see, again, also please let us know. For developers out there, if you'd like to see your game featured in our Indie Highlight series, uh, feel free to shoot us an email at contact at urbangamingelite.com. We'll also have that down in the description. And let us know about your game, how we can get a hold of it, and different pieces with it. We're also, of course, always looking for new games to review, preview, and for developers to showcase in our Indie Spotlight series. So once again, guys, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. This is Never Alone, a great, great game. I highly recommend you check it out. Uh, it's a really great design. It's also great to play co-op. Uh, you can find it on Xbox One, PS4, or PC through Steam. I believe all those are currently still at $13.50. It is a game that's well worth the time uh, to kind of look into it. The, the cultural pieces of it, the design, everything with it is really well done. There are some gameplay issues, uh, some mechanics kind of stuff. Uh, if you've had a chance to check out my review, which I'll link down below as well, you kind of see some of the elements I talk about. Uh, they get frustrating at some points in the game, but you can kind of push through that and see the, the, the design behind it. And there are also items that I think they could fix moving forward. But it really is a great game, and it's a game you have to kind of experience for yourself. So with that, guys, thanks for your time. I'll catch you next week.